I'm Chris Duke and today on Motors I'm going to show you how to install an e-fan in an air intake kit on a 2005 Ford F-150 pickup truck. Step Today on Motors, we're going to return our attention to our good old F-150 project truck. Now, we haven't spent a whole lot of time underneath the hood in previous episodes, so today we're going to focus on some bolt-on modifications that you can easily do yourself. Now, from the factory, Ford's 5.4 liter engine does have some power, however, after we lifted this thing up, we lost quite a bit of it. Now, we can help fix that by changing the gear ratio, but we can also add some underhood upgrades that are quick and easy and don't involve a messy gear swap. So today we're going to show you how to install an electric fan kit from Flexalite as well as a cold air intake from Advanced Flow Engineering. Now, a Flexalite kit comes with dual 15 inch blades and a variable speed control which gives us an additional 17 horsepower and 20 foot pounds of torque while improving gas mileage and keeping the truck engine bay much much cooler. Now since we're going to be underneath the hood and we're going to have to remove the intake anyway just to install the fans we're also going to install an AFE intake which is designed to increase airflow as well as increase horsepower and torque. Let's crack this baby open and get started. For this installation, you're gonna need a 532nd drill bit as well as a quarter inch drill bit and of course a drill, a Torx T15 bit as well as a 532nd Allen head bit, various ratchets and extensions, a 10 millimeter and an eight millimeter socket, an eight millimeter nut driver, various screwdrivers, a crimping tool, some wire cutters, some wire strippers, a couple of 10 millimeter wrenches, and of course some work gloves. <laughs> to get started, you have to remove the stock air intake assembly, and it's pretty easy. Grab a 10 millimeter socket with an extension. There's four 10 millimeter bolts, two on the right side and two on the left. Once you pop those out, there's an electrical connector way back here on the left hand side. On the right hand side, there's another electrical connector and that is for your mass air sensor. Once you've got those popped off, there's just one more thing to do. Right here is a bracket on the back side of the air intake tube. Pop that off as well and then get this radiator cover off. Once you've done that, then we can move on. Next, we need to remove the fan shroud cover. In order to do that, you just grab an eight millimeter socket and you've got a bolt here and a bolt on the other side. And then this just slides right on up because it's just kind of hanging down there. But you can't really take this off right now because you've got this big fan in the way. So in order to get that off, we have to get a fan clutch removal tool. You can get these at your local auto parts store. You can either buy them or rent them. And once you've got that on there, a firm grasp on the other bolts that's retaining it. You can twist this counterclockwise to loosen it up. So with the fan off and your bolts out of your radiator fan shroud cover, you can remove the whole assembly. Just be careful you don't hit anything on the radiator. All right, there's the fan. Now this takes a little bit of wrestling to get out. There is a clip that comes through here for one of the wiring harnesses, so you do need to get that out of there. Now with this big fan shroud removed and the fan itself, we're losing a lot of weight and rotating mass, so that engine's gonna have to work a little bit less hard and we're gonna increase performance. Now the weight of these two different fan options is about the same. The difference is that an electrical motor spins this one as opposed to your engine turning that one. That's a big difference. Install the variable speed control module right here on the front of the fan. Just mark it with a pencil. Use the two included screws that they give you right here. Drill 532nd hole right there and right there to secure this to the fan. We need to connect the black and red motor wires to this purple and yellow wire on the variable speed control. So for that, we're gonna drill a quarter inch hole right here in order to fish these down through there. And on the back side, 
we're going to drill a hole right through this center rib so that we can connect the wires through there. Use the provided yellow butt connectors to connect these two black wires from the fan's motors to the purple wire and then do the same thing for the red wires to the yellow one. Before you install the FlexLite fan, we have to put some brackets on the truck as well as some mounting hardware on the fan itself. These are pretty easy to install as they use the stock bracket that's down there. So you just kind of press that in there and then use the factory eight millimeter bolt that you removed and tighten it down on the top. Just want to do this loosely for now because you may have to adjust it in a little bit. Install the mounting bracket with the supplied eight millimeter bolts from FlexLite on both sides of the fan. Drop your new E-fan into place, and once it's down there, you can secure the mounting plates to the mounting brackets on the side with a 10 millimeter bolt. Now you want this to butt up right against that radiator to create a nice seal around it. So right about there ought to do it. You can tighten it down right there. Now what we found with this particular vehicle and this application is you really can't get to those bottom bolts on these side brackets at all once you've slid this in. So put those on first like we have and then you can bolt it down to the front. Next we need to take care of some wiring. One of the things we need to do is hook up this thermostat by poking this into the radiator. We're going to take care of that next. But for now we're going to hook up one of the provider wires from our control unit down to the AC compressor, which is located on the lower passenger side of the motor. There's a two-wire connector hooked up to that. Pop that off and then splice in one of those provider wires back up to the appropriate contact on the control unit. Take your temperature probe and put it into the radiator over by the upper radiator hose on the passenger side. You want to push it through so it comes through the other end about a quarter to a half an inch. And on the other end, put on these electrical connectors that FlexLite provides you and connect it to the back of the control unit to the number 10 and 11 spots. Now we're going to leave all this wiring kind of loose for now until we're all done. Then we'll tidy it up. Do the same thing by crimping on one of the provided connectors to the green wire that goes down your AC compressor and hook it up to either the number 8 or the number 7 on the back of the control unit, depending on whether it's positive or negative down there. Now there's two more wires that you have to hook up. Your positive and your negative go straight over to the battery and you can use the provided fuse holder from Flexolite to do that. Now you can optionally hook up your control unit to go to your ignition or a switch inside your car. Now as I mentioned before, you can hook up the switch wire to go to your ignition or a switch inside your vehicle. We decided to hook it directly up to our 12 volt power source. Now tidy up your wiring and turn on your vehicle as well as the AC, then adjust the screw counterclockwise for a cooler setting or clockwise for a warmer setting. After installing our AFE intake and adjusting our fan speed control, we can go ahead and put our fan shroud cover back on and we're pretty much good to go. Now for more information on AFE's products, go to afepower.com and for more information on Flexolite's products, go to flexolite.com. And of course, for more episodes of Motors, head on over to motors.tv. We'll catch you next week. Uh, snap. Okay. Yes, we do. Now we need to take care of But we decided to harden. Bye. Ha <laughs> ha!